So we're going to look at the 1950s life at home. Uh, look at some of the pictures here. Your president was uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower, um, basically a war hero from World War II, the supreme leader of the Allied Front in World War II in Europe. Uh, you'll see the television makes its debut or becomes big in the 1950s, and it's very common for the family to gather around the TV. Elvis Presley, big pop star of the 1950s. McDonald's, check out the price of those famous burgers, 15 cent a burger. And, of course, the merry housewife with the turkey. So we'll talk about a, we'll talk a little bit about each one of these, if not more. The election of 1952, Democrats nominated Adley, uh, Adley Stevenson. Uh, Truman does not run. He actually will leave office with a 33% approval rating. That will be one of the lowest in U.S. history until President W. Bush. Uh, however, when you go back and look at what he did as president, he probably didn't get as much credit as he deserved for some of the decisions he had to make. Keep in mind the atom bomb. So... Uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower, he's a war hero, Republican. Uh, really, politically, both Democrats and Republicans didn't know which way he was going to go because he's, he's very, very moderate. Uh, he does choose a conservative vice president in Richard Nixon. Um, Ike's strategy was to keep a low profile, and he tried to avoid any controversial issue. That's big in the 1950s because we're going to have some issues coming up. So Social Security under Ike is expanded. Unemployment benefits are uh, expanded. Whoop. As you see, he increases the minimum wage, uh, increased money for public housing, and he creates or he is instrumental in the interstate highway system. He creates a system of super highways, which encourages sub, uh, suburb development. If you look at the map, in 1950, your federal highways, look at them in 1987. There's a drastic difference. There's not as many of them. Any of you ever been on I-40, I-95? These are part of the interstate system. This is part of the Eisenhower interstate system. Uh, he gets the idea from Germany. He actually travels up and down the Autobahn as he's invading Germany. And he loved the system of highways that it was it was a super highway and you could get to where you're going quicker. So he basically authorizes this bill. It becomes law and we start uh, we embark on our super highways in 1956, not completed until around 1990. So Eisenhower is going to be the first president to uh, identify these triangles what he calls iron triangles and and he he identifies them with the military industrial complex uh, these iron tri triangles are going to be impossible uh, if not extremely hard to kill so he found that cutting the budget from the branches of the military to be quite a challenge because of these iron triangles that would be defense contractors congressional committees and defense department uh, the Defense Department all worked together to make sure everybody got paid and everybody stayed on the government the, the government paycheck. Keep in mind, it's a lot worse today. You've got pharmaceutical companies, you've got healthcare companies, you've got a lot of different uh, iron triangles in our government today, and it's it's really really hard to cut our our budget because of these iron triangles. The American Dream. Conglomerates start to happen really after World War II with the Marshall Plan. And this is where you have multinational uh, companies so or a company in, in a lot of different countries uh, that produce a lot of different goods. Um, as you see, it includes a number of smaller companies and in unrelated industries. That would be ITT, American Telephone, uh, AT&T, Telegraph, uh, Xerox and GE. Franchises become big in the 1950s as well. This is a relatively new invention and this is rights are sold to individual entrepreneurs to open a business using the parent company's name and system of the parent company. 
uh, the most successful and the one that really kind of lays the foundations for how we view franchises today, of course, is McDonald's. We have social conformity of the 1950s personality test. Uh, the term keeping up with the Joneses comes in the 1950s. There's a, a book, The uh, Organizational Man. Uh, it's a study, really, and it discovered uh, companies would create company people by giving personality tests to applicants and employee workers. Uh, had to keep up with people like them. Uh, airline travel becomes huge in the 1950s. Transcontinental flights become a very common thing. If you look at the pictures, this is a levee town. These are houses, what you hear of uh, cookie cutter houses, uh, and basically they clear cut land and they start building houses of like six different types. So they're called levy towns in the 1950s. Check out the price, $7,900 for a house. Uh, these were called levy towns in the 1950s, and we do this very commonly today. Suburban life, the baby boom, the birth rate soars in 1957 to where we had one baby born every seven seconds. Uh, the result was 4.25 million people born. It's the largest U.S. population in, in U.S. history uh, from a time period. It roughly runs from 1945 to 1960. They are in retirement age now. Dr. Spock, not Mr. Spock from Star Trek, but Dr. Spock, Benjamin Spock, he writes a book and he calls it Common Sense. It's a common sense book for baby and child care. He advises parents not to spank their child, to hold meetings with their children so they could express themselves. He says it's more important for moms to stay at home and be with their baby and raise them from home. Uh, lays the groundwork kind of for where we are today with kids uh, raising them. Uh, another important note to make in the 1950s is 1952, John Salk, he developed the polio vaccination. And you get it today, and it's important that you get it. Remember, we did have a president that suffered from polio. Uh, women's roles popularized in the happy housemaker or homemaker in magazines. Ozzy and Harriet's very popular TV show of the 1950s. Of course, Leave It to Beaver still in syndication, but Ozzy and Har Harriet were actually the bigger show in the 1950s. In reality, women were miserable. Working, uh, working women were on the rise. They wanted to get out and, and, and work for a living instead of stay at home. However, jobs were limited and pay was less. Women's rights, just like civil rights, just like uh, all minority, a lot of minorities' rights, uh, all are watershed movements from World War II. Leisure class, you have about, uh, you have the average work week now being 40 hours a week, earned vacation and other benefits people were getting. Um, you have a lot of time off. So, we have new inventions coming along too, labor saving devices, um, chore saving devices like dishwashers, washing machines, um, clothes, uh, clothes dryers. There's a, you know, a series of things. So this is going to increase time for people to do with their time what they want, leisure time. So this is something you may want to pay attention to because we are a throwaway society today consumerism and obstinance. Consumerism is the buying of material goods and this would be uh, equated with success. So the more you have, the newer things you have, the more successful you look. It's actually called planned obsolence. It's purposely designed products to become obsolete in a short period of time. Companies do this all the time. Cars do it every two to three years, maybe four. Uh, basically they come out with a new design so, so the one that you just bought that's a year or two old looks obsolete. They do this so you will go buy more products. It's a trick. And typically, kids, you guys uh, fall for it. Your mom and dad may not. So why would they do this? They do this to encourage consumers to buy more products. Americans will become a throwaway society discarding uh, appliances that were barely used and perfectly good. And that's why we consume more goods than any other country in the world, and we have five times the pollution. Pop culture, TV's golden age. Microwaves actually come out post-World War II. 
uh, and with these microwaves, you can transmit television waves for, for long distances. Radios start to play music to compete. You start to get FM radio in the 1950s where they're going to start playing um, uh, music. Uh, movies. As you see, you have color, stereo, cinemascope, 3D, and smellovision. Yes, you can watch a movie and get the smells of the movie. Uh, if you've been to Disney with Soren and stuff, they do it in rods now. But that, it actually starts in the 1950s. So one of the more famous books of the 1950s that you need to know about is Jack Kerouac's On the Road in 1957. Basically being on the road incurs aimless travel. We have a lot of World War II veterans that join bike, uh, biker groups. Uh, but this encourages what is called the beatnik um, movement. The beatnik movement is pre-hippie movement, but it's, it's similar. So, pop culture, uh, rock and roll music starts. Uh, you know, Elvis is one of the early pioneers. Um, we have a lot of pioneers. He's not the first. I don't think he's the first <laughs> rock and roller, but, um, you know, they give credit to, uh, um, uh, gosh, what's his name? Uh, Haley and the Comets, uh, Rock Around the Clock. I can't remember his first name, but uh, the beat movement, nonconformity movement starts. Um, they didn't like what mom and dad stood for. Beatniks are followers of the beat movement, a.k.a. that's why the Beatles named their name the Beatles. You notice it's E-A, not E-E. We are finished.